hey, sorry, I was just practicing some scales on my guitar. It's not really what I had in mind when I set out to learn a musical instrument, but someone once told me it's really important to master the fundamentals before you do anything you actually enjoy, or something like that. And since it was a stranger on the internet, I really took this advice to heart. And since then, I haven't really enjoyed guitar at all. The fundamentals are so important, why am I not having fun? I guess I really set out to play guitar to learn some of my favorite songs. Not really learn all this music theory. And to be honest, it's quite discouraging. I haven't really wanted to practice since then. But this has got to be the right way, isn't it? Now, I hope you'll agree that sounded kind of ridiculous when talking about how to learn a musical instrument. But unfortunately, there are many that approach learning web development this way as well. There are gatekeepers out there and Twitter thoughtfluencers that opine about how kids these days don't learn their fundamentals. And while fundamentals are critically important and do have their place, when you're a beginner web developer, you need to have small wins. You need things that'll keep you motivated on your web development learning journey because it's not easy. When I first started making the transition from static websites into more interactive ones, I rapidly found myself approaching burnout. I started with vanilla JavaScript, and while it was easy enough to get going, I found it to be tedious, and my naive code ended up a mess. I then had a pit stop at this thing called React that everyone was talking about, but as someone that was used to writing HTML and CSS inside of Notepad++, React almost seemed like a foreign language to me. Then I found Svelte. Svelte matched my mental model so well as a beginner, and provided the perfect on-ramp into building the dynamic web apps that I was imagining. And while I definitely glossed over some fundamentals in those early days, web development was fun again. Learning Svelte was low friction and let me build cool stuff quickly. And that's so key for any novice that's trying to learn something new while keeping their motivation up. Today I want to talk about why Svelte was the perfect teaching tool for my beginner self and why it might be for you or those you're trying to teach as well. Let's dive right in. To understand why Svelte was such a great choice for me as a beginner, Let's first take a look at its great reactivity model. First, let's take a look at this counterexample, but write it in vanilla JavaScript to understand some of the pitfalls that a beginner might fall into. Try your best to get in the mindset of a beginner and put your assumptions aside. We have a style tag up top that pushes our app to the center of the screen, as well as a few bits of markup that will let us display the count and a button that will let us interact with it. We have enough experience to know about variables and that we'll need to store our count so that we can track it over the course of our application. We also just learned about a great new document.query selector API that will allow us to get a reference to our label and change its relevant attributes. We've heard legends about where query selector came from, something about jQuery, but we don't really understand it all that well. It stands to reason that we'll want our label's text value to be equal to what we have in our count variable. And if we save this, we'll show that we actually have a number on the screen already. Seems like a great start. We'll use our friend query selector again to get a reference to our button element so we can hook up some logic to it. We'll read about hooking up event listeners on Stack Overflow and maybe even copy a little bit of code. But now that we have a place to write our logic, we should just be able to increment the count variable. And we'll see that this doesn't work. And many of you would have seen the error already. But as a beginner, each step in this process seemed to make logical sense. I might even try debugging using our friend the alert function to see what's happening with our count value. And it is incrementing. Hmm. Let's do the same exercise over in a Svelte component and we'll compare our experiences. Now we're looking at a Svelte component, except you might notice it doesn't look all that different from the HTML we were just working in. We still have a style block, except in this case, the CSS is automatically scoped to this file. We have regular markup hanging out here in the middle, and we have a regular old script tag. Again, we'll have a count variable initialized to zero, and after going through this felt tutorial, we understand we can interpolate dynamic data directly in our markup using this curly brace syntax, and we have our number showing up on the screen. We also learned about the on colon click directive, which allows you to pass in an inline function and bind an event handler directly to a button. We'll do our count plus plus logic like we did before, except in this case we get a different result. The app works as expected. A Svelte component feels like a natural progression from a plain HTML file with just some dynamic data and interactive bits sprinkled on top. 
The second reason that I think Svelte is the beginner's JavaScript framework is its batteries included approach to front end development. A quick search on NPM for React CSS will give us something like 3,500 packages with similar results for React animation and React state. And while the breadth of choice is definitely a strength of the React ecosystem in some scenarios, for the beginner that's just learning, this can lead to analysis paralysis. Even experienced engineers have a hard time integrating new libraries into their application. A quick scan of the Svelte docs, however, gives you built-in support for transitions, animations, and even state management. Now we could build these extra features using vanilla JavaScript and web fundamentals, but we'd spend so much time on that, we'd never actually get to build the application we set out to build in the first place. Again, this would hinder us on our path to becoming an experienced web developer. And that's why Svelte is such a good choice for the beginner, because as you build increasingly complex web apps and hit more use cases, you don't have to NPM install another new library, you just keep using Svelte. And this has never been more true of Svelte than since the introduction of Svelte Kit, which allows you to build full stack applications in the same thoughtful svelte way. I hope you've seen how Svelte might be the perfect tool for the beginner web developer who's looking to build more dynamic and interactive web applications without a huge learning curve. I wanna stress again that learning web fundamentals is of paramount importance. They enable you to build increasingly complex and performant websites. But I would also stipulate that there really isn't a blessed path on the journey to becoming a web developer. There are really only detours and pit stops. The most important thing is that you keep going and seeing results quickly, often thanks to Svelte, is an important motivator. I'll resist the temptation to make a rock star developer joke but I will leave you with this. Whether it's guitar or web development, all of us have something valuable to create then share with the rest of the world, but only if we actually get on with creating it and don't get stuck practicing skills. <laughs>